G'day everyone. Been wiring up this early model 1UZ with a, uh, a Link Storm. Uh, the vehicle's going to be an automatic, so it's going to have a separate uh, transmission controller uh, for the transmission. But I thought I'd just uh, quickly discuss um, a few things about the computer. Now we chose a Storm uh, because we wanted the sequential injection, so it's got uh, eight injector outputs, so one for each cylinder. Uh, it's got eight ignition, but we only need the two of them. But we did need a number of uh, auxiliary outputs, more than the, the eight that a Storm normally has. So in this case, um, we're running the factory stepper motor. So the factory stepper motor is here. That takes up four of our auxiliary outputs. Um, we're going to run a fuel pump. Uh, we're going to run some fans. This vehicle has two fans on it. Um, we also, because of we're running the stepper, we need to run the ECU hold function. So there's our four. And we needed a couple of extras to do what we wanted it to do. So because we're only using the two ignition outputs, we can use the unused ignition for auxiliaries. Uh, so one of the ones we're going to use is we're actually going to run the factory oil pressure gauge on the surf dash. We're going to use a pulse width modulation from one of the auxiliaries to, to run the, um, the gauge. We're running a taco signal to the transmission control unit, so we needed that. Um, we're also, we've put in a, a, a warning buzzer. So we can program a buzzer to come on if the engine gets low oil pressure or the engine um, gets too hot um, and we've got a check engine light and we've got a, a coil output. Uh, we actually do have one, one left over so that's good if in the future if something gets changed um, it's quite handy to have. Oh, The last one we've got in there is, is for the air conditioning controls. So right now we're just going to discuss uh, the ECU hold power. The, it's a function that, that people often get wrong or struggle to make work. And what it does is it allows the ECU to stay on for a few minutes after the key's turned off to allow the stepper motor to reset. Um, it makes that funny little clicky noise on this one. So what we've got here is um, my favorite Lexus. The stepper motor is located on the front of the engine, the idle speed control. But I've got an early model. The, the one that's on this engine is a later model one. But in this case, I've got an early model one for the demonstrations where we can actually see that pin tool moving. So when you wire it up, here's some relays and fuses. Um, this is our EFI relay, so I'm just going to flip this over. So we've got permanent battery power coming in to the relays. So this one's got quite a few relays. Uh, it is going to be an automatic vehicle, but we've got a start relay. We've got a spare one there. We've got an air conditioning relay for the air conditioning pump. We've got two fan relays, a fuel pump relay, an ignition relay, and an EFI relay. So I've got the EFI relay feeding uh, voltage to the ECU itself, to the stepper, and to the injectors. And I've chosen to put them on separate fuses. You don't have to, but I just prefer to do it that way. And the CAN circuit. Uh, this one, the future plan is to put a CAN lambda on it for the mixture control. Um, for the ignition, it's feeding voltage to the coils, and also this one's going to be running an automatic, so it's feeding power to the voltage to the to the to the to the auto side of things. Fuel pump is only feeding voltage to the fuel pump, and we've got our two fan relays, and we've got the air conditioning output circuit. So when I was actually testing this one, uh, the I had the EFI relay on, and the, then we configured 
the ECU. Um, after putting, the, as I slowly put the relays in, it had a bit of a back feed because of the, when I put the fan relay in, it just made a quick change. Um, and, and what I'd done is I'd used the fan, I'd fed just straight ignition to the fan um, circuits. And normally it's okay, um, but this one it back fed through the, that fan circuit. Um, so it wasn't much to change, but I'll talk about that in a moment. So when you're setting it up in the ECU, if you click on ECU settings, and you need to configure one of the outputs to, now you can either use an auxiliary output or an ignition or injector output, but there are different ways of wiring them. So you really need to look at the manual. So this one, I've used an auxiliary output, and it's auxiliary output four, and I've configured it to ECU hold. And that comes out, it supplies an earth to the EFI relay and to the ignition relay. Um, I've then, on one of the digitals, so if we come down to, and, and oh, to do the auxiliary output, so you just click on the auxiliary output, here's auxiliary four, and then you can click on the function and bring up the menu and you drop it on, turn ECU hold power on. We then go to the digital inputs, and it's the same process, click on the menu, select ignition switch, push OK, and you need to put it, if, if you've got it to go into a low setting, so on earth, you normally turn the pull-up resistor on. In my case, um, I'm using a high voltage signal, so a 12 volt signal, so the pull-up resistor off, and the on level is high. So that's the configuration of it. You then need to give it some settings, tell the, the ECU how long you want it to be on for. So in the bottom of the auxiliary table, auxiliary option, you've got ECU hold power, and you click on there, time to keep alive, and I did have it on five, I'm gonna change that to four seconds, because the, e the stepper was setting fine. This ECU isn't actually configured, uh, is, isn't communicating uh, with the laptop, so it'll bring up a little warning when I turn it on. So with that done, what we're wanting that ECU to do is, is hold the, the power on that uh, ECU after you turn the ignition switch on. I'll turn the ignition switch off. So I'm just going to turn the, the switch on, or equivalent, jump this wire on. So we've got the blue lights come on on that ECU. I've got this probe here into the main 12 volt input, 14 volt input into the ECU. Um, which is the center pin, pin five of the A plug, because I'm using a storm. Now I've also, of course, got the stepper motor on the same circuit. If you've got the stepper motor on a different circuit, then it's not going to, that's not controlled by this, then it's not going to work. Okay. My ECU is trying to, my PC is trying to connect, so I'm just going to say yes, and it's changed that to four seconds. And I'm going to save that. Right, so now when I disconnect the ignition switch, what we're going to see is we're going to see the stepper motor move. We're going to hear it clicking. Here we go. And you see quite clearly that it shuts, and we heard that ECU click off. We'll just do that again. We're looking at the ECU this time. So we've got the light on on the ECU. Disconnect the ignition, the light staying on. Four seconds goes by and it turns off. Looking at that stepper motor. Here we go. Excellent. Now when you wire the fuse box, you need to have some uh, an ignition input coming in. I brought it in through a fuse, and after the fuse it goes to the ECU on, digi on a digital input. I've used digital input too, and it also flows over to a diode. 
So on that diode, I've tucked it inside this plug. And a diode is just a one-way valve for electricity. So it comes in through, the diode comes out, and the output is the side with the, with the line on it. So that's where the one-way valve, that's the output side. So I've tucked it in there, and it stops it back feeding back into the ignition. So momentarily as it comes in, it needs to power up this ECU. So the ECU doesn't have a permanent battery power. So it powered up through that ignition switch supply. It sees the ignition on, and it turns and puts an earth circuit out through the auxiliary hold, or the ECU hold function, and turns the EFI relay on. So one of the outputs to the EFI also goes to pin 85 of the relay. So you've got ignition switch through the diode into 85, and then on 86, you've got ECU hold, and I've done it to both the ignition relay and the EFI relay. Now, on that, on that 85 pin, I've got all my relays linked on that 85 pin. So they're all on the same circuit, so they can't backfeed. They can't get a funny ignition backfeed, um, which they are sometimes prone to do on through the auxiliary outputs. And that allows it to keep the power on for a few seconds after you turn the key off. So that's the ECU hold function. You use it when you're running stepper motors, is the main reason. Um, I do it a lot because I run Lexus motors, which run the, the stepper motor, if I stick with the standard stepper. But it's also a way that a lot of people get it wrong. The other option to wire it, which is in PC Link, uh, is if you use um, option two, where you use an ignition or a injection output. So check the diagrams. Wire it up right, and uh, it shouldn't give you any trouble at all. Hope that's helpful, and uh, we might do a couple more lessons on um, setting up Link ECU.